Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today we are gonna look at a fun topic, the top shortcut keys in Windows 10. With shortcut keys, you can save a lot of time and chances are you're already using some shortcut keys. Hopefully today I can show you some new shortcut keys that'll save you even more time. Now first off, why should you even use sh shortcut keys? Well. Every time you move your hand from your keyboard over to your mouse, you're wasting precious milliseconds that you could be spending elsewhere. Have you ever thought to yourself, hey, I wish I had more time in the day. I really wish I had more time. I'm strapped for time. Well, you should be using shortcut keys because shortcut keys can help you save time. Watching this video is a good investment of your time because you're gonna end up even quicker using your computer. All right, well enough talk, I don't wanna waste any more time. Let's jump on the PC and I will sh I'll start off with some of the most essential shortcut keys and then show you some new ones that you probably haven't seen before. All right, well here I am on my Windows 10 desktop and I have this nice little sheet open that I'm gonna use to run through the different shortcut keys and I'll demonstrate how each one of these works. What you can do is if you wanna reference this, you can also look in the description of the video and you'll find all these different shortcut keys within there. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start basic, so don't jump away if you already know some of these, but I wanted to start with a good foundation. The first one here is Control C to copy. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the Control C key and I've just copied that item. Well, what good is copying if you can't do something with it? And the next one is Control V. What that does is it pastes the item I just copied. So I press Control C to copy that. Now I'm gonna press Control V and that'll paste the item that I just copied. So that's a very essential one, probably something you already knew. The next one is cutting. And what you can do with cutting, think of the X as a nice little cut there. I'm gonna press Control X and that cuts the item. It's similar to copying, except it removes the original uh, version or the item that I cut. And what I could do now is if I press Control V here too, that'll paste it. So that'll work for both if you copy something or if you cut something. The next one that we're gonna look at is undo. And what I could do with undo is let's say I delete this line of text and I'm gonna delete that. Let's say I didn't mean to delete it. If I press Control Z, what'll happen is that item will reappear. So it, un, it basically undoes what I just did. But let's say actually I meant to delete it. What I could do is I could redo. So if I press Control Y, that'll now delete it again. Or I, I could press Control Z to undo, Control Y to redo, Control Z to undo. And you could go back and forth doing that. Now what's nice is you could also use that outside of just a text file. Let's say I delete uh, this image file that I have on my desktop. I could press Control Z and that'll bring it back or Control Y and that'll send it back to the recycle bin. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna look at is how to delete an item and you press Control D to delete. So I have this headshot of me on my desktop. Let's say I don't wanna have a picture of myself on my desktop. I'm gonna press the Control D key and that's gonna delete it and send it to my recycle bin. Now the last thing that I wanna to touch on editing, and this is one that I didn't know for a long time, and this is something that I use now all the time, but Alt, Shift, Up, Down, Arrow key moves bullets up and down. So I'm gonna press Alt, Shift, and then Up, Arrow, and that'll shift it up in my bulleted list, or I'll press the Down, Arrow, and that'll move it down. What I always did in the past is I would, I would cut it, I would pick a new line, I'd paste it, and that took a lot of time. Instead, Control, Shift, Up, Arrow, Down, Arrow, very nice way to move items up and down a bulleted list. All right, well, those are some of the basic, essential shortcut keys that I typically use for editing. Let's jump down and see what else we have. The next section that we're gonna look at is find and search. Now with Control F, you could find text. So I'm gonna press that, I'm, in, I'm here in OneNote right now. If I press Control F, what that'll do is that'll bring up my find dialog. And here I'll search for Control. And so it highlights all instances of that in my document. I can even bring up something like Notepad. And here too, let's say I go to the beginning and I press Control F. I'll type in Kevin and then it finds all references to Kevin. You could do that in a browser. You can do that in any window uh, within Windows 10 to find items. Aside from just finding text, one thing that you could do is you might wanna find an app on your machine. You might wanna find a document. And what you could do is press the Windows key and Q. 
So I'm going to press Windows Q. So you can think of Q as query, and that's why that's why they have a Q, and that brings up the search dialog, and then you can just type for something. So let's say I want to open Word. I just type Word. You could also press Windows S, S as in search, and so I press that, and that also brings up the search dialog. Or if you really don't want to press two keys, what you could also do is simply press the Windows key on its own. That brings up the Start menu, and here too I could type in Word. What it does is when you open up the Start menu, it, de it places the default focus in the search field. Field, and I could just start typing that way as well. So that's a way that I could find and search across my PC. Moving on, the next thing, this is something that's useful in both documents, on the web, or even in something like File Explorer, but different selection commands. We're going to start with the first one here. To select all, you press Control and the A key at the same time. And so there, when I press it once, it selects a line. When I press it again, it selects the entire document. Uh, so kind of a very nice one. Also, control click to select multiple items. Let me open up File Explorer to demonstrate this. So here I have a whole bunch of different images that I've recently touched. And if I press the control key with my mouse click, I can select multiple items here. The next thing I could also do is if I want to select multiple, multiple items, I could press control uh, I could press shift plus click at the same time. So we're going to go back to this example. Let's say I want to select all of these files. Well, I could go through and press Control click to select all of them, or I could simply press the Shift key and click, and that'll select all of them. So a nice little use of the Control key and the Shift key. What I can also do is, let's say you're selecting text, you could use the Shift key in uh, this situation as well, where I press the Shift and the arrow key, and I could select text. What's nice is you could combine that with the Control key now, so Shift, Control, and Arrow, and you could select multiple words. So also a very nice way. You could also do the Down key if you want to select down a row, or the Up key to select up a row. So kind of nice uh, technique to select items. Moving down, these are Windows commands that you could use uh, to manage your Windows. One of the first ones that we're going to look at is Alt-Tab. So if you press the Alt-Tab key, what you can do is you can jump through all the windows that you have open, open on your desktop. When you open this view, um, as long as you continue holding the Alt key, this view will stay up. And then you can use the arrow key to go through. Or you could use the mouse key as well to go through and select the window that you want to jump to. Uh, so kind of a nice way to navigate between open windows. Let's say I want to close a window, a very quick way to do that. So let's say I have the calculator open and I don't really want to calculate anything right now. What I could do is I press the Alt key and the F4 key to close a window. So let's go ahead and press Alt F4 and that window is gone. It has disappeared. The next one, this is one that I recently learned that I'm really digging and I really like, but you press the Windows key and the number key to open up an app on your taskbar. And the number correspond the number that you press corresponds with the position on the taskbar starting from the left. So here I have Outlook as my first tile, followed by Edge, followed, followed by File Explorer. So let's say I want to open Outlook. What I do is I press Windows and the one key, and that'll open Outlook. Let's say I want to open Word. That's the fourth one on my taskbar. I press Windows 4, and that'll pop up Word. So really a nice way to open up items on your taskbar. So what you want to do is make sure you have your most essential apps on the left of your taskbar, uh, because that way you'll be able to take advantage of that shortcut key. Another very nice one uh, that's available. So let's say this window here, uh, what I could do is the Windows key and arrow keys, I could snap this window to different positions on my desktop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Windows and then right. It'll snap it onto the right side of my screen. Windows left, and it'll bring it over to the left. Uh, I have to press it twice. One time I'll just put it in the middle, and then once again it'll put it on the side. I could also do up, down, left, up, or I could even go full screen. So you could just play around with those different options of pressing the Windows key and the arrow key to move your windows into different positions. One of the nice ones, uh, let's say I have this window open, I want to see my desktop. I press Windows D to see the desktop. So there's Windows D, now I can see my desktop. Press Windows D again and that'll toggle back and forth between the windows you had open and the desktop in back. You could also press Windows M, which minimizes all windows. However, the downside is you can't press it again to toggle back the windows that you just minimized. So two different options. I, tip, I tend to use Windows D because I like the ability to toggle back and forth. Typically, I just want to go back to the desktop, open a file, and then jump back to what I was doing. Uh, these are a few Windows management shortcut keys. 
Next, we're gonna look at some browser navigation keys. Now, we spend, when we're on our PC, we spend much of our time within the browser. So knowing some good browser shortcut keys is pretty helpful. The first one that we're gonna use is Alt-Left or Alt-Right to navigate forward and back. And what I mean by that is, here I am on the New York Times website, and it looks like the coronavirus is top in the news here. So I'm gonna click in and look at this article. And what I could do now is if I press the Alt-Back key, that'll send me back to the previous page, Alt-Right, what that'll do is that'll bring me forward one page. So I can navigate forward and back using those shortcut keys. The next one, Control T to open a new tab. So I'm gonna open up the browser again. Let's say I wanna open a new tab. I press Control T, a new tab is opened. And then let's say I wanna go to Facebook, I could go there. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's go back to the sheet. And what I can do next is Control Shift T brings up a closed tab. So I'm gonna go back to the browser. Let's say I don't wanna to go to Facebook. I'm gonna close this window. What I could do is I'll press Control Shift T and that'll open the window that I just had open. Now this one's a little dangerous. When you close a tab on your browser, keep in mind that someone could always reopen that tab that you just closed. Just a little pro tip there. What you can also do is some nice little navigation shortcuts. We're gonna look at these next two together, but control tab, that'll move to the next tab, and control shift tab moves to the previous tab. What do I mean by that? So what we're gonna do is, here I am in my browser, I have four tabs open, we're gonna press control tab, and that always jumps to the tab to the right. And then if I add in the shift key, control shift tab, it goes in the other direction, and this will navigate to the left. So kind of a nice, quick way to navigate through all your open tabs in your browser. And lastly, what I wanna show, the last one that I have on this list is the F5 key or control R to refresh the web page. So we're gonna open the browser again. And let's say, I don't know, is this still the top story? Let me press F5 to refresh. It just refresh the page. It looks like nothing's changed. That's still the top story. Control R does the exact same thing. So two different ways. The control R, the R stands for refresh, which is why that's the shortcut key. Okay, those are a few quick browser navigation shortcut keys. Let's move on. The next section that we're gonna look at is how to zoom in or out on your window. This isn't something I use that often, but it is interesting to be able to do it, but you press the Windows key and the plus key or the Windows key and the minus key. So here I'm gonna press Windows plus, you'll see that opened up the magnifier. And now if I press Windows plus, it'll allow me to zoom in and then I could move around as I'm zoomed in. This is actually a really annoying thing that you could do to people where you set their computer into Zoom and then you walk away and they don't know how to get out of Zoom unless they find the little magnifier up here. Um, you could also press Windows minus and that'll zoom out again, but kind of a, a neat little shortcut key if you wanna zoom in to check on the details of something. This next one is very interesting. I don't think many people know about this, but Windows 10 comes with something called Virtual Desktop. A Virtual Desktop, this is my desktop right here. What I can do is I can open up additional desktops. What's the advantage of that? Well, let's say you're working on, let's say a project or maybe a school project and maybe you have all your personal browsing in one desktop and then you want a separate desktop with all your project files. Well, you can do that with virtual desktops. I'm gonna show you how to set it up simply and then we're gonna show you how to do it with shortcut keys. But so the way you set this up is you do it through the task view and to get to the task view, you press the Windows key and the tab key. So we're gonna press Windows tab. This opens up the task view so I can see all the windows that I've recently engaged with. I can also scroll through time. There's this little option up here called New Desktop, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, and now I have a second desktop. So when I go to my second desktop, I don't have any apps active within this desktop. So now I could jump back to my previous desktop that I had opened by going back into the task view, and here I could select the desktop that I want to jump to. What I could do with shortcut keys, Windows Control D, what that'll do is Windows Control D will open up a new desktop. So there's a new desktop. And then Windows Control arrow left goes back to the previous desktop or to the right to go to the last desktop that I added. And let's say you don't want a desktop anymore. You press Windows Control F4 and then I'll close the desktop. Windows Control F4 and I'll get rid of that desktop. So just a neat way you could use shortcut keys to manage your virtual desktops. 
Moving on, the next one that we're gonna look at is how to project to an external monitor. You press the Windows and the P key, and what that does is it opens up the project dialog on the side. I only have one PC monitor hooked up to this computer, so I'm on the PC screen only. But let's say you had a second monitor. You could duplicate, you could extend your view, or you could only project, let's say you have a laptop hooked up to a desktop monitor, you could only you could have it so it only goes on that second screen. So a few different options that you could do here. I use this quite often, especially if I'm projecting to uh, let's say a projector. Lastly, I wanna finish off with the category that I called others. These are other shortcut keys that don't fit within their own category. Uh, or they don't fit within a clear category with many other shortcut keys, but these are also very handy ones to know. Control Shift Escape opens up Task Manager. I'm gonna go ahead and press that. Task Manager is nice if you wanna kill an app on your computer or if you wanna see how much of your CPU or your memory or your, let's say your ethernet that you're taking advantage of or using, you could do that with Task Manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's close that. Control P, this is probably one that most people know. This prints out a document, so it opens up the print dialog, and I could just I can then print all these very useful and valuable shortcut keys. I'm not gonna do this one right now, but I use this at work quite often. The Windows key in L will lock my PC, and to be able to use it again, I need to enter my password. Windows E will open up File Explorer, so I'm gonna go ahead and press Windows E, and here's File Explorer. If you wanna to jump to your files, your pictures, wherever you wanna go, Windows E will get you there. So quite easy to pull up. And the last one, this one on its own, is also an awesome shortcut key. It's not very well known, but it has a lot of power. I'm gonna press Windows G, and what that does is it brings up something called the Xbox Game Bar. Now, you might be thinking, well, hey, I'm not a gamer. What do I wanna do with the Game Bar? Well, what you can do with the Game Bar is you could use this as a screen recorder. It has its own set of shortcut keys, like Windows Alt R to start recording. But what you can do here is you could hit record, and it'll record whatever you're doing on your computer, record the app that you're in. And it's a free and easy screen recorder that comes with Windows 10. You get to it with Windows G. All right, well, that was a quick look at some of my favorite and top shortcut keys within Windows 10. By taking advantage of these shortcut keys, you can save some precious milliseconds. You don't have to lift your hand off the keyboard and move it over to the mouse. Instead, you could stay on the keyboard and hopefully gain some efficiencies. I hope you learned some new shortcut keys today in this video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. That way I know uh, these different shortcut keys helped you out. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit Hit that subscribe button, that way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if there are any other videos that you wanna see me cover on this channel, leave a comment down below, I read them all and I'll add it to my list of videos to create in the future. All right, well that's all I had for you today. Enjoy saving time and I'll see you next time, bye.